Tonight, we've got all the highlights from the Fark U Tales 100 at the Berlin Raceway in Marne, Michigan, the eighth round and the halfway point of the Fark Low Dollar Series season. Points leader Mark Thompson took his first poll of the year as he still looks for his elusive first victory with the Walker Texas Racing Team. But we've got more stories to go over before the race. Last week's Smash Beer 1 for the Road 100 at Nelson Ledges was filled with avoidable accidents. Not even Michaela Perry Jones was innocent on her way to her first career victory, putting Thomas Kohler's Carbon Professional Machine into the wall out of a top 10 run. Power Surge America veteran Jim Kidd has also been criticized for over-aggressive driving, starting the week before at the Carl Superstore in Jonesboro. But he claimed after Nelson Ledges that, It's crazy out there. No one is willing to settle into a race anymore. No one is willing to make their moves strategically anymore. Slow cars won't move out of the way. It's balls to the wall and pedal to the metal out there. No one backs off the throttle and they will run you off the track without a second thought. I have no choice but to match the aggressiveness of the rest of the field. But Monica Rook would be the ultimate target of Fark's ire as she parked her number 22 Rook construction car on the racing surface after the engine expired, nearly being clobbered by Keegan Mallory in the process. Monica Rook later tweeted that she purposely blocked the track, igniting a poop storm that even drew criticism from TM Master Cup Series regular Joe Olenek and racing industrialist and 2014 Fark Low Dollar Series champion Ryan Matthews. Fark officials were not amused by this revelation, and promptly slapped Rook with probation and a staggering 100-point penalty. Rook's recent attitude seems to be shaped by her recent frustrations during the Fark season, where she struggled to finish 14th at 70-77 Speedway, and was taken out early on at Carl's Superstore. Moving on to this weekend, Mike Malone has a new ride in Lou Singer Racing's number 11 entry for the remainder of the season. Aaron Singer was benched by his father for his DUI earlier in the year, but Mike Malone is in this car as much more than a substitute. The 48-year-old Malone's small LA-based deli chain Knuckles' Sandwiches recently signed a deal to start selling sandwiches in many of Lou Singer's casinos and other properties, so Malone could become a long-term fixture at Lou Singer Racing. Finally, on to tonight, the Fark Larry Lemon Super Series race earlier in the evening was probably the craziest of the year, between terribly organized restarts and an extremely slick turn three. And surviving it all to take his first Fark victory would be AJ Young, who held a top three spot all night after a full field invert and saw an opportunity as Hamilton Porto blew up coming to the white flag. Young darted to the outside and held off up and downs to complete the biggest upset win of the season. Young was grinning harder than the Romeo's Alternators guy after the greatest night of a turbulent career that started all the way back in 2001. What kind of show would the Fark Low Dollar Series follow up with? Find out now as we bring you the highlights of the Fark U Tales 100. Mark Thompson leads the field to the green flag. He was uh, the first driver to go out of the race at Nelson Ledges last week while on his outside and hanging on is uh, last week's winner, Michaela Perry Jones. In fact, these two would remain side by side for the first six laps of the race. And the battle only came to an end with the first caution of the night, and Michaela Perry Jones edges out Mark Thompson at the line to take the lead. And the caution would be for Monica Rook's bad week continuing as she gets spun into the wall in turn three by Zach Webster. I'm not sure if I'd want to go back and hear her radio from this. After the restart, Michaela Perry Jones jumps ahead of the 98, but she would soon get held up by lap traffic. Winston Orwell in the 84, not making her life easy. She tried to shut the door on Mark Thompson, but quickly realized she'd probably take herself out doing that. Mark Thompson says, thank you very much, I'll take the lead now. But Michaela Perry Jones definitely had the faster car, at least on the initial start. We'll have to see if she can make up that ground again. But we got another caution, battle for fifth. Jim Kidd takes the 17 of Hunter Blaze out, sends him for a scary ride in turn one. We were just talking about the trouble that Jim Kidd has gotten himself into in recent weeks, and he's certainly not winning himself any friends here. Andrea Kinasa blows up on the restart. She was running in 32nd. Aaron Coltier now sends the 18 of Jim Kidd for a ride in turn three. Carrie Fenton and Sergey Akovsky get, get upside down as they hit the wall. Eddie Barrow in the 04, the second of the Focus Autosport cars gets caught up, but Kerry Fenton and Sergey Akovsky get back going. I would praise American Steel here, but uh, these cars are made of plastic. 
Harry Asanola in the two having some trouble as he dives into the pits, coming to the restart. And what is Monica Rook doing? It looks like she either thought or was told that she'd be getting waved around the pace car and everybody else in the lap down line behind her followed suit. These guys are definitely getting black flagged. But to Monica Rook's credit, she immediately comes in to serve the penalty along with Silas White, Pierre Sebastian, and the others. But we've got another immediate caution. Oh, Jim Kidd, what are you doing? He takes second place Michaela Perry Jones off the road with him on the backstretch, and they both go into the bushes, and that's gonna do the both of them in. Michaela Perry Jones will not get to follow up on her victory tonight. Harry Esanola comes out of the pits, one lap down in 26th place. He had a tire go down coming to that last restart. Mark Thompson tried to get away with the lead, but immediately turned the 79 of Silas White around and brought up another caution coming to lap 49. At the same time, John Burr's first start of the season would hit a snag as he tangles with Sergei Akovsky while fighting him for 24th. Pierre Sebastian not left with too many options but to plow into the back of the, 20, the 54. Sebastian, also in his first start of the year, goes out. Riley Durbin gets by the 16 of Rip Tyler for fourth in a whole bunch of lapped cars, but Zach Webster gets into the back of the 16, sending the 38 into the wall, and Silas White gets caught up in another one. Seems like Riley Durbin can't really catch a break this season. And then right behind this wreck, contact between Packer Carroll and John Burr is going to send Jefford Jackson in the 05 into the wall. Chuck Johnson sporting the Larry Lemon colors this week, takes uh, Rip Tyler and Zach Webster at the same time, moving up into the top five after starting 14. Chuck Johnson is Mark Thompson's closest rival for the championship, and uh, judging by this tweet he wrote last week, He's definitely a little frustrated by the amount of luck Thompson seems to have. Speaking of Mark Thompson, he continues to lead, and now he puts the 11 of Mike Malone a lap down. Mike Malone, not quite as fast as he'd like to be in his first start with the Loose Singer team. However, Noah Dalitz is having a good night by his own standards. We're about 20 laps from the finish, and he's running 13th with uh, no incidents. He's going a lap down to Mark Thompson right now, but he's on track for his best finish of the season. Rip Tyler is back into fifth place, and as he uh, goes by a group of lapped cars, Mark, uh, Monica Rook gets into the back of Ruslan Bashimov, sends him and Rip Tyler up into the wall. And Bashimov gets into the 16 once again for good measure. Rip Tyler's got to get away quickly. Here comes Mark Thompson, who uh, just misses putting him a lap down at the line. Now the battle for second is on between Zach Webster and Dan Lechleiter. Little contact with the 909 of uh, Donnie Ashcroft is not going to stop Webster from picking the 10 off. Webster's made it up to second despite not really keeping his nose clean all night. Oh, four wide with the lapped cars. That's not going to end well. And Zach Webster is sent for a wild ride in turn three. That's the end of the night for Zach Webster. And that's going to set Dan Lechleiter back several spots. Two laps to go, and the Pearson Sweeney teammates of Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Harry S. Enola are going at it. And it all comes crumbling down as Enola puts Smith Thompson into the wall. Really should know better than that, especially because these two were running a lap down for the 12th spot. That's going to be an interesting team meeting at Pearson Sweeney Motorsports. But now all eyes are on Mark Thompson as he leads the field across the line to finally take his first win of the season for Walker Texas Racing. Mark Thompson dominated after Michaela Perry Jones got taken out, scoring a perfect 125 points. The rest of the top five slipped under the radar as everyone crashed around them. Todd Stater grabbed his second and owner Dave Hetzel's third runner-up finish in three weeks. Riley Durbin battled back to take his first top five and first lead lap finish of the year. Ben McClellan continues an, impre an impressive first season with a fourth place finish. And Carl Hampton quietly worked his way up to join his teammate in the top five after starting back in 17th. Meanwhile, Daniel Lechleiter failed to recover after his wreck with Zach Webster and ended up ninth. And I hope Harry Asinola is proud of being the first car off the lead lap because he had to take his teammate out to do it. 
further back, Carrie Fenton and Sergei Akovsky finished very solidly considering that they flipped their cars over. Danica Hollifield fell out of the race on lap 96 but still finished ahead of six cars that took the checkered flag, and Silas White was the last car to finish. Finally, looking at the rear of the field, Michaela Perry Jones couldn't keep up the momentum from her first win thanks to Jim Kidd not paying any attention at all, and last place finisher Hunter Blaze can certainly agree with her misery. Predictably, Mark Thompson increases his points lead over Chuck Johnson with his win. The top four haven't changed from the last race, but Packer Carroll now swaps spots with Jim Kidd to round out the top five. Todd Stater jumps from 12th to 7th, and Dan Lackleiter also gains a few spots to round out the top 10. Riley Durbin finally makes it into the top 30 after his third place run, ending up 23rd after being 36th the week before. Monica Rook was 22nd after last week, but is now nowhere to be seen after her huge penalty. Ryan Bolden rounds out the top 30 after skipping this race. Next week, the Far Low Dollar Series goes across the border for the annual Canadian stop, this time at a new venue, the Moncton Raceway in New Brunswick for the Duck Roll Dash. And as always, you'll be able to catch all the highlights right here on the FARC Racing Network.